Someone asked me recently about the apps that I used under DOS, and my favorite DOS app when I was an undergraduate in the early 1990s was a spreadsheet called As Easy As. It was a great spreadsheet. It was basically the same as Lotus 123, but it was geared for engineers and scientists. Uh, and it was as easy as one, two, three. So that's a great dad joke. Uh, since I was a physics student, I used as easy as all the time. One thing that was super useful to me was linear regression. That provided the analysis and the statistics that I needed for my physics lab. One other cool thing was as easy as was what's called shareware. And that meant that you could download it and you could try it out for a certain amount of time. And if you liked it, you had to register it. Uh, you could, by the way, also share with other people. But if you liked you get to register it. If you go to F1 and then you do order form, you could see that uh, you would just need to mail in a check of $69 uh, and then $6 shipping and handling, and they would send you back a copy of the manual, a paper copy of the manual, uh, as well as a floppy disk with the latest release, and you could also call in for support. This was a perfect price for me uh, as an undergraduate student. But as I said, I used this for uh, linear regression, which was extremely useful as a physics student. And here's how that worked. So let's start by creating some data that we can analyze. So a common first year lab is dropping an object and you time how long it takes to drop from different heights. Now the equation of motion is X as a function of T is X zero plus V zero uh, times time plus one half a t squared. And uh, if you make an assumption, so you assume that uh, the initial position x zero is zero. So basically you're measuring now the distance that it's fallen and you're going to assume that uh, v zero is zero. That means that the initial velocity is zero. So you're dropping it from a dead stop. Uh, then the equation becomes x as a function of t is one half a t squared, where a is the acceleration uh, due to gravity. Now, if you uh, solve for t, then you get uh, t squared is uh, 2x divided by a, or uh, t is going to be the square root uh, of 2x divided by a. And you'd normally take data and you do a line fit of t squared as your y on a chart and then x as the height. And then you should have a line that has a zero intercept because it takes zero time to drop zero distance and a slope of two over g. And we had a photo gate to do all of the timings for us. So let's start by making some data that looks kind of like that. So here I'm gonna have uh, x, which is basically my height, uh, and we need to create uh, some data here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, slash to go into the menu. And I'm going to do D for data. And I'm going to do uh, F for fill. And I'm going to say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fill this range. I don't even know how far this is. I'm going to go from 0.1 to 1.0. This is more than that, but that's okay. I'm going to show you how to raise some cells. Uh, so I'm going to do there. I'm going to start at uh, 0.1 because there's no point measuring zero. And I'm going to increment uh, by 0.1. And so that's brought me all the way up to 1.1. So let's go ahead and get rid of this last cell. So I'm going to do a slash. Uh, this brings up the menu. And now I can do a range. So I'm just doing R. So you can actually just hit the letter that's been highlighted. Uh, and so here I'm going to erase. And then I'm going to erase this range right here. So I'm just going to do the, the points from point 0.1 up to 1. By the way, uh, we should be good physicists and we should be uh, using fixed uh, numbers here. So we can go out to oh, the single decimal place. And so I'm going to do a slash and then R for range. And I'm going to do F for format. I'm going to put this as F for fixed. And I'm going to do one decimal place after the decimal. And then I'll highlight that range. And now I've got... 0.1 up to 1.0. Now I need to have my time. So what does physics say is the time required? So that's going to be uh, at square root of twice, so 2x, so twice a8 divided by the acceleration of gravity, which we know is going to be 9.8. 
Uh, now, this gives us a a number, but uh, you know, in in using uh, lab equipment, the Photogate usually has you know lab precision, so it's not going to give you this you know long of a uh, decimal number. So we might measure, let's say, to like three decimal places. So I need to edit this. We use F2 to edit, and rather than using at square root as my first thing, I'm actually going to do an at round of the square root of 2x divided by a, and I'm going to do that out to three decimal places. And so now I have a cell that has 0.143 seconds to drop the ground from 0.1 uh, meters high. So I'm going to do a uh, slash. I'm going to copy that cell from B8 to B8. So I'll hit return and then uh, B9, and I'm going to hit dot, and that allows me to select the range, and we'll put it into that range there. Now let's uh, be good physicists, and we'll put this out to three decimal places, because you'll notice that with 0 0.350 down here at 0 0.6 uh, for the height, uh, we just want all these to look the same. So we'll do uh, slash, and then range, and then format, and then fixed, and then we'll put this out to three decimal places, and then we'll select that range. And there we go. There's our numbers. Now we want to simulate some uh, measurement error here. So we're going to use a function called rand. Now rand will generate a number between zero and one. It will include zero, but it'll never quite get to one. And if I hit F9 a couple of times, you'll see that this number always updates whenever I recalc the spreadsheet. Now I want my uh, first number that's changing to be the third decimal place in. So actually I'm going to do at rand uh, divided by 100. And so you'll notice that it's always going to have the third decimal place changing. Hit F9 a couple of times, you notice it's always going to be the third decimal place that changes. And so this is going to be T plus an error amount. And so we're going to do uh, plus B8 plus, uh, and then we're going to do uh, we're going to do the rounding function again of a random number divided by 100 out to three decimal places. And this was clearly a random number that uh, had the uh, uh, probably a zero in the first position. So that's the next decimal place on. And so it never, it didn't, it didn't actually change its number. If I do F9 a couple of times, and so that number does change a little bit. So we actually are getting some random numbers in there. And I can copy this, so do slash, and then copy uh, from C8 to C8, hit return there, and then down one, and then hit dot, so I can start doing a range. And now I've got an entire range there. But I, um, I don't want this to keep changing, right? Every time I hit F9, it's going to recalculate my spreadsheet. That's a little weird. So let's, uh, let's do this. Let's, um, let's do a slash, and we're going to do a range. And we're going to do a copy, but we're going to copy by value. And so we're going to copy this range and we'll just put it over here. And so you notice that in column C, I actually have calculations, right? These are all calculations and it has random numbers. And every time I hit F9, those numbers are changing. But in column D, they're just numbers. So hitting F9 doesn't change those numbers. So now I can move those back on top. So we'll do slash to go into the menu. We're going to M to move. We'll select that range and we'll put it on top over there. All right. So that is uh, sort of simulating some, uh, some data lab data that actually has a little bit. Oh, I should probably also make sure I do uh, uh, fixed decimal places. So we'll do slash and we'll do range and we'll do format and we'll do fixed to three decimal places and we'll select our range. All right, so now we've got some sample data here that sort of simulates uh, some lab data. So we would chart, as I said, normally uh, T squared as the Y and then X as the height. So we need to have a T squared in here. So let's do T squared and we'll just do a calculation of T squared. And that's gonna be uh, C8 times C8. Uh, and we don't have to do fixed decimal places on this because this is a square of a number. And so I would expect to get uh, some additional decimal places and that's fine. Uh, so we're gonna do slash and then we're gonna copy that one cell and we'll go down here and we're gonna add that down to the rest of my range. 
And now I would do a linear regression. So I'm going to do the linear regression over here. So again, I'm going to be doing a, a chart of t squared as 2x divided by a. And I would expect then to get an intercept of 0. Uh, and I would expect to get a slope of uh, 2 divided by a. And if a is the acceleration due to gravity, then that means I would expect to get 2 divided by 9.8. I would expect to get a, a slope of around uh, 0.204. So let's uh, let's do our linear regression. So let's I'll just highlight some things here just to point out what it is we're doing. So I'm going to do a slash and then a range. I'm going to change the color. And let's do this as sort of a bright white, just to highlight that that's uh, important data. And we're going to do the background color as blue, so we don't change my spreadsheet colors. And then that's our range right there. That's our X values. And then we're going to do the same thing, slash range color uh, of those colors. And we're going to start actually over here and do this range and make that nice bright white. So those are the important numbers. So now I'm going to do a linear regression, and I'll do slash, and then D for data, and then R for regress, and now I need to give the X values, and that's right here. Uh, A8, and I'm going to hit a dot, and then I can select the range, and then the Y data is over here, and hit a dot so I can do a range, and then I need to do the output. And I'll put the output right here. And so, quit out of that. And so the important numbers are right here, do a slash, range, and then color. And let's do this as bright yellow, just so we can highlight it. Those are the important values. I've got an intercept that's basically zero. And I have a slope that's very close to what I expected to get uh, as 0.204. Uh, now, as a physics student, I, of course, would need to rely on the uh, error values, and so that's the plus or minus on that range, and so I'll just do a slash range color, and then we'll select the same color to highlight these two cells right here. That's what I would use in my physics lab report. Now, let's do a chart with this. So if I do a simple chart right now, uh, so I'll just go back up here to the beginning of my data so it's easier to go, and then slash graphics. And we'll do a, an X, Y chart, and we'll select our range R. And then the X data is over here. And then the A data is right here. And now if I do a view on that, you'll see that I get this line that's not quite straight because my data is not quite uh, linear uh, because I've got little error values in there. But I want to be able to show this with that line fit. And so now I need to back out of that graph and I can do uh, my line fit. And I would do this all the time as part of my uh, my, my lab analysis. And so uh, we need to now use these values over here with the slope and the intercept uh, to make a line. Now the line's going to be the intercept plus the slope times the x value. And so we're going to do plus, and then it's uh, g7 is the intercept, plus, and then the slope is g8 times the x value, which is a8. And so we would expect at uh, 0.1 of height that it would take 0.022 uh, seconds to hit zero. Now it turns out if we copy this value down, uh, we're going to get a bunch of weird and wrong values for the other cells. And I'll show you why, and then we'll fix it. So we'll do a copy, uh, copy cell from that uh, cell right there, and we'll do put this into the remaining cells down here. And we're getting a bunch of weird values. We'd expect this line fit to be pretty close to these numbers over here, but it's definitely not. So why is that? Well, because up here we had uh, G7, which is the intercept, uh, plus uh, G8, which is the slope, times A8, which is the X value. And as we went down one cell, as we copied that down, all those cell references also went down. Well, going from A8 to A9, that's correct, 
but we didn't want the G8 to become, you know, G9. Uh, we didn't want uh, G7 to become G8. So we need to actually lock in those row values. And that's where we use the dollar sign as a prefix operator. So here's what we're going to fix it. We're going to do F2 to edit. And so we want to lock in the row for G7. So we can use dollar sign seven. That will lock in seven so it won't change. If we also wanted to lock in the column, we could use dollar G, uh, dollar seven, but that's unnecessary. I mean, we could, but we don't have to. And then uh, we're going to do the same thing for the, uh, uh, for the G8. We're going to do G dollar eight. And now if I uh, do a copy, so slash and then copy uh, from that cell down to these cells, now I have uh, line fit values that are looking much better, uh, very close to my T squared. So let's go ahead and color this in just so we know that this is the extra field that we're going to use. So we're going to do slash and then range and then color. And we'll use, let's say, a bright cyan. And we'll do it across this range here. All right, so let's add that to our graph. So do a slash graphics and then a range. And we want our B range to be uh, this range here. And if I now view the chart, we're almost done. So now we have two lines that have been drawn on my chart. Uh, one of them is a straight line that's got uh, dashes uh, for the line, and each mark is a little square. And then I have my actual data uh, value, which is range A, uh, which are uh, straight green lines with a little green X at each one of the data points. I actually would prefer, this is our uh, standard in our lab class, to have the data points show up as little X's, and uh, but no line, and the line fit should just be a dashed line. That was the way that we preferred to do it in our physics undergrads, so we're going to do that here. So back out of my graph, and we can go into Format. And for Range A, I only want to show the symbols. And for range B, I only want to show the line. And that's all we need to do to view our chart. And now we can see the individual data points that we took in the lab, although we faked it here, and then the straight line fit across that. And I would save this as a uh, image file and import it into my lab report. Uh, and that way I could talk about my data visually without having to include all the specific uh, data points. So what'd you think about that demo? Uh, would you like to see other uh, uses of the as easy as spreadsheet? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, I'll also include a link in the video description because uh, Trius, which is the company that made uh, as easy as has since released as easy as for free. It's gratis. It's not open source, but they have uh, made available on their forums uh, the activation code that you can use to download and and uh, activate your own version of as easy as. I thank everybody who supports me on Patreon. You really do make this channel happen. I know I say that every week, but you really do uh, make a huge difference. Some of you are supporting me at a higher level, and I want to recognize you, especially here uh, for that. Visit our website at freedos.org, join us on Facebook, follow us on Mastodon, and consider supporting me on Patreon. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.